Just a heads up, this episode of Other People's Pockets has some explicit conversation and is not appropriate for kids. Please skip this one if you're in the presence of minors or if you're uncomfortable with talk about sex. When you are sick and you live in a place that doesn't value giving healthcare to people, your financial goals inevitably yeah. change. The yeah. reason that I am not like homeless or some shit, right, is because I have this porn, that I have this business that I've made. My guest today is a voice artist who creates audio erotica under the name Yum Princess L. Audio erotica is like porn, but only in audio form. Elle, as she's known, has carved out an unexpected career for herself after her disability made it hard for her to work a normal job. Her style of online sex work has allowed her to pay down medical debt, have more financial stability, build a community, and explore an important part of her personality. And she absolutely loves her work. Young Princess Elle is on Patreon at patreon.com slash young princess where to access the good stuff you'll have to pay at least five dollars definitely check her out maybe with headphones on i'm maya Lau, and this is other people's pockets the show where i ask people how much they make and how their finances work so the questions we all have about money can be a little bit less of a mystery Elle, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. (laughs) This is such a pleasure. (laughs) Can you identify yourself? So I am Yum Princess Elle. Uh, I make erotic audio, otherwise known as audio porn. So I was just saying that it's so crazy to talk to you and to like have you be talking to me because it's kind of like when you, if you've ever met an NPR reporter in person or something, it's like, oh my God, I know your voice. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, because I've been listening to your audios. So, um, and here you are talking to me. Um... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I've listened to your podcast too, so I can kind oh, of good. <laughs> right. no, I've listened to like most of your episodes. Oh, so. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so we're having that experience with each other. Yeah. Um, What I was going to ask you is, like, the speaking voice that you're talking to me in right now, is that totally your normal speaking voice, or are you doing a little bit of L? No. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, because when I hear it, I'm like, oh, this is, like, I'm listening to L. (laughs) You're not the first person to say that. That's why it's so funny to me. Oh, okay. So this is totally... To be totally honest with you... I'm not really good at doing other voices, so I'm just really lucky that my main one people like. Um, <laughs> Amazing. I, I really can't do that many. Like, yeah, it's not really my thing. Can you describe what your journey has been to being an audio erotica creator? Yeah. So I started in August of 2021 on a whim. So I was just perusing the internet for things that people may look at at times. And I stumbled upon this subreddit on Reddit and it was audio porn. And I was like, what even is that? I'd never even heard of it. And I listened to a few and I was like, I think I could do that. Like, I actually Mm. think I could do that. Now, I didn't intend to make money. Um, (laughs) That's just the God's honest truth, I was shocked that people liked my stuff. I made an account, didn't touch it for a month, and then one day woke up and was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it, I want to try it. So I did, and um, I didn't know this at the time, but my very first post did very, very well. And I was. And what was that first post? (laughs) Well... (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's funny you ask. Like, that's more of the L. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Like, here we go. (laughs) It was inspired by me being mad at my old job. So I had actually lost my job earlier that year. 
So I made an audio about being like bitchy to a coworker and being like, oh, you think you're so smart? Yeah. Oh, really? Like that. Mm -hmm. I was like channeling my anger. Mm -hmm. So it was in an office setting where this man was like trying to demean me. And I was like, oh, we'll see about that. Was it sexual? Yes. Oh, okay. So there's more to that story then. <laughs> it was basically like my coworker was like, he wanted me to do work for him. And I was like, um, no, like do your own work. You're embarrassing. And then he like started talking about me and flirting with me. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's what you think this is. You think that you can just come in here and talk to me however you want. Well, that's not going to happen. And so I flipped it on him and I was basically like, take your dick out. And he was like, no. And I was like, why not? You thought it was fine to talk about me like that. So why why can't I tell you to take your dick out? What's the big deal? Are you scared? Are you nervous? Did I make you nervous? Oh, you poor thing. Oh my God. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> How much of you are like kind of laughing in the back of your head when you either come up with these scenarios or when you're performing them or you're like, so like you're taking it seriously? I take it completely seriously. So there are times people will tell you that I definitely have a lot of jokes. Like I have funny stuff in my audios because that's my personality. That one in particular, I was dead serious because I was mad. But then like just now we were also like laughing about it. So, like, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. because I laugh at it because I'm making porn, right? Like I'm not... I'm not making uh, rocket science. You can't even make rocket science. But <laughs> I'm not, you know, like the tropes are porny. Yeah. Uh, and that's just what it is, right? People yeah. aren't coming to be spiritually enlightened. They want a nut. And I respect that. Wait, so you made this first audio like kind of on a whim. Yeah. And... How did you, like, know what you were doing? Like, did you take inspiration from other things? Or were you just like, I'm just going to turn on the mic and post something? I have to be totally honest with you. I don't feel like I've ever been so naturally good at something as I am at improvising long form. <laughs> form. Amazing. And I don't know why. Yeah. I can't. I don't know. But I... I did it in one take on my phone and to make the sex sounds, like those plap sounds, right? Like you would hear, mm -hmm. um, I like was hitting my leg in real time. I mean, I wasn't even <laughs> editing it. Like I was like a one man band with like yeah. all these different sounds that I was trying to do in real time. People were like, the sounds don't match up. And I'm like, shut up. Yes, I do. <laughs> it was just like, it was just a mess, you know? Um, Okay, wait, I want to talk a lot more about your audios in a second, but I want to get more of a sense of like, where did you come from? Like, what kind of work, generally speaking, were you doing before? And like, how did this evolve? So I have a background in sort of like business strategy. And um, I don't really want to say more. It's too specific. I'm sorry. That's fine. Oh, but that's interesting that you had like some kind of business sense before launching into this. Yes. Okay. That makes a lot of sense because it seems like you're pretty successful. So you're on Patreon, which for people who don't know, Patreon is a platform where creators can post their content and different patrons like me or anyone can sign up for different levels of subscription and get access to content. And like you have a level of subscription that's $800 a month. I do. Does anyone subscribe to that? Sometimes. Okay. So it's not like the same 100 people are signing oh up month after month. <laughs> Girl, please. <laughs> That sub is limited to only one person because basically you have the ability to um, provide me with sort of a prompt for a public audio. I don't take requests generally, like at all. So that's why it's such a huge perk because mm -hmm. it's the closest you can get to getting a commission from me. And I only take on commissions very rarely. Okay. Got it. So you have 1,094 patrons. What's the most common amount that people are signing up for? Either ten or fifteen dollars a month. So I'm guessing this is not what you're actually making. But if you have a thousand ninety four patrons, and if people are subscribing at fifteen dollars a month, then 
that would be $196,000 a year. Oh, my God. I but wish that's that not true. <laughs> I wish um, that was true. No. But that's, like, but that's not, like, just, I mean, I think what's interesting is, like, you know, it's not like you have a million followers, but right. those people are really dedicated, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you can really make a living off of not the hugest community. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm nobody if you really look at it, right? Like, I, I have 30,000 followers on Reddit. Like, that's not big at all in terms of online followings. But it's a very niche community. They're the person, they want to go to the nice coffee shop where they know everyone there and it's very fancy and artisanal, right? Like, I'm offering a luxury porn experience. I'm not offering, like, you know, I'm going to suck your dick and take a nap or whatever. I'm offering like a whole full-blown experience that is finely crafted. And so not a lot of people want that, but those who do will pay for it. You started this, you said, in 2021, kind of on a whim. And then how did it evolve to where you're full-time making money from it? I'm telling you, it was such a whirlwind. So I started in August of 2021. And very shortly, I'm talking days after I posted my first audio, people were like, take my money. Can I commission you? And I was like, maybe? I don't know. I didn't know how to do a commission. I didn't know how to take their money. I didn't know how to do any of it. And this was all on Patreon or were you posting somewhere else? No, I wasn't even on Patreon yet. This was on Reddit. I didn't even know Patreon was an option at that point. Technically, you can't even do customs through Patreon. That's a whole other thing. One of the challenges of being an online sex worker is that it's really hard to accept money because your anonymity is almost never protected. So for the first Mm. couple of months, I only accepted payment through gift cards. (laughs) Because I didn't want to jeopardize my privacy. And so Mm -hmm. that was the beginning, right? And then I realized, oh, I can do Patreon within their specific terms of service. So I did. And from there, the most important thing I did was to be consistent. I posted free content every single week. Mm -hmm. I only missed one week when I had emergency surgery. (laughs) Like, I was unbelievably consistent. My ideas were pretty unique and I always respond to comments. And so from August 2021, when you first posted something until now, like what, walk me through, like, when were you able to quit your day job? March of 2022. Nice. So that's not even a year. (laughs) No, it was less than a year that it became full time. And that was solely through commissions. Oh, meaning that was solely through the people who pay a lot of money? So a commission is when somebody reaches out to me wherever on any platform and says, I have this really specific request that I want, and I want it to be this many minutes long, and I want it to include X, Y, and Z, and then they pay per minute. Mm. I'm happy to talk about my rates if that's something that you're interested to know. Sure, yeah. When I started, I started at $6 a minute for an audio. My current rates are $22 a minute. And there's also like additional stuff. There's different flat fees for if you want an intense oral audio, right? If you want a crazy sloppy blowjob sounding audio, that's going to, there's another fee for that because it's very physically taxing. Now I raise my prices Pretty consistently, I went from 6 to 12, probably by December uh, of 2021. And then by May of 2022, I think I was at like 17 a minute. And then now, I don't I don't remember when I changed it, but most recently, um, now it's 22 a minute. And so your audios are around like 20 minutes long-ish? Yes. Uh, they can okay. be anywhere between 20. They could be 15 to 40 minutes sometimes. So like 22 per minute at 20 minutes is like 440 bucks. That's like the kind of money that you were making that like really allowed you to 
quit your job. Yes. And I was taking on a lot of them, I should say, like okay. at almost a dangerous burnout level. Um, <laughs> like, frankly, I basically was doing commissions on top of doing weekly free content on top of running a Patreon. Mm. I never stopped working. That's just, yeah. that's just the truth. I can't make it sound yeah. like it was really easier. I was chilling because I wasn't. No. Right. Can you explain why anonymity and privacy is so important to you? There's a number of reasons. The first is that I am in grad school. I have a whole other career and people hate sex workers, period, point blank. Like, let's call a spade a spade, right? Mm -hmm. Like, people don't want sluts walking around even though they want to have sex with them. Mm -hmm. That's just the facts. And it doesn't matter that I'm just sitting in a closet. It's it's the same stigma. I say sitting in a closet, I mean recording for no reverb. So there's that. There's a huge stigma attached to it. And because I really love the idea of creating a character rooted solely in my sexuality, mm -hmm. I think there's something really pure about an unbridled sexual character that doesn't have the baggage of regular life. It's fun for me, and I know it's fun for my listeners too. But the more important piece of that is genuinely that stigma would prevent mm -hmm. me from being able to do other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I was wondering if there's just a freedom of the anonymity. Like, you can just do it and put it out there, and, like, you don't have to worry about all this other stuff of Absolutely. what someone's going to say. I mean, they might say something about it, but they're saying it about your character. They're not saying it about you, literally. Exactly. Um, yeah. We talk more about that, like, something so pure about creating a character that's based on your sexuality. People feel really, really weird about sex in general. Even people who are in relationships and love each other very much a lot of times have trouble talking about their sexual desires. I've never been that person. <laughs> Anyone who knows me is not surprised at all that I do what I do now because I've always been very sexual. I've always been very dedicated to sex education. And so for me, when I think about sexuality, I think about it as a playground for adults who have to go through life doing things in a very specific way to avoid people being nasty or to avoid losing their job or whatever. And I see sort of the sexual place as somewhere where you can play almost like a child mm -hmm. where you can let go of all of that armor that you have to wear all the time to present as this perfect person and have a real genuine moment where you just are channeling your desires. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really beautiful thing that could help so many people. I use it as an outlet for mm -hmm. how I feel. Yeah. So when something shitty is going on in my life, I hate to say it, but that's when I've made some of my best work mm. because I channel all of my anger and aggression. Mm -hmm. um, I genuinely use it as a channel for my intense emotions. Now, where that becomes complicated is I am disabled. I am chronically ill. And so when I'm having a flare up, not only do I not feel sexy, I'm in incredible pain. So then it becomes very difficult Lately, I just recently got a treatment that helped me a lot, like a lot, a lot, which is part of why I delayed this interview because I wanted to see if it would work and I'd feel better and I do. Awesome. Um, I know I, I can't only like, cry if I talk about it too much, but I was really actually quite sick this semester and I still loved what I was creating, but I did not feel well. Right. Mm. So it didn't change that I loved what I was doing, but I just physically didn't feel well. And that's mm. really hard. Yeah. Because when you don't actually feel sexy, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. You know what I mean? So I made it work. I just had to spend a lot more time before recording, actually forcing myself to get turned on, where normally I can do that, you know, in a pinch. So does this kind of work allow you to have a work life and a financial future that 
would have been hard in any way having a chronic illness? Like, yeah. does this open up new avenues for you, given what you're dealing with physically? I hate that I'm like going to cry answering this, but yes, it's honestly life changing for me because like I said, I worked somewhere for a number of years and I was like the best employee that you could ever want. And when I got sick, they kind of just were like, fuck you. And mm -hmm. I was really scared that I didn't know what I would do. And so to find this way that I can work where when I'm sick, I can actually take a break. I can't even express it. It's life changing in a way I think few people can understand unless they have dealt with the discrimination that comes with being a disabled person in a normal nine to five workplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's also credit to you and it's credit to your this community you've created because I was noticing a lot of the comments on your posts are super encouraging. Like I haven't seen people post disgusting or like rude or any kind of comments like that. It's like, another amazing audio. You are truly the GOAT, greatest of all time. Just what I needed today. Thank you, Elle. That was perfect. Like, it's all like people who are like, I was having a really hard day and this really picked me up. And so <laughs> can My you... community is the best. Yeah. Like, can you talk about who, to the extent that you know, who is in your community? Like, what's the demographic and what's kind of the vibe that you get from them? So it's hard to say the demographic because everybody is anonymous. But based on the messages that I get, people fall into sort of two camps. On one hand, there is people who are very sexually inexperienced, who haven't maybe been with a woman before and want to explore their sexuality in what feels like a safe way for them. I get a lot of messages from people who were raised very religiously. That's honestly one of the most common messages that I get. And I feel And these are like direct messages to you or are these like in the comments? These are DMs. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I get DMs all the time about mm. how people have basically used my audios to connect with their sexuality and explore in a way that felt safe to them. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's generally the younger crowd, so like 20 to 25-ish. And then I get some couples, which I love. That's <laughs> my favorite <laughs> um, because I, I'm pan, so I love women. I love everybody. Can you uh, describe what pan is for our listeners? Um, yeah, so it's being attracted to any gender identity, like cis man, cis woman, trans man, trans woman, non-binary, you name it. I could, I could love anybody. I love getting couples. I absolutely love getting couples. And that has that's grown a lot. I've gotten a lot more couples uh, this year, particularly. And then I would say the last sector tends to be like older men who maybe are divorced. I don't actually know their circumstance, but I can tell they're older because they're like, what is Discord? I don't know how to use a computer. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you must be 30. <laughs> so old. No, God. No. <laughs> I mean, do you think that there's more of a market for like audio porn that's like a woman and a man? Or economically, do you feel like, oh, wow, when I post this kind of thing, like I know I'm going to get, you know, a ton of subscribers? Or do you notice any patterns like that? So generally, cis men are the most likely to spend money on porn from what I have observed. Also, I will never charge trans women, gay women. Um, I will never charge them or pay while that content because there's already a shortage of it. So for me, that content will always be free. I do have patrons who are trans and I let them download all of my trans stuff for free I'm not trying to gatekeep content for marginalized groups. So what all goes into this when you're creating an audio? Like how many hours and what is the editing like? What, what is the actual mechanics of how these come together? Because I live in an apartment in a very congested area, 
Um, I can only record at the late, late hours of the night. Interesting. So think between 1.30 a.m. is probably the earliest I would start, and I generally end around 5 a.m. Most of my work still to this day is improv. With improv, the reason that I prefer it um, is because I can just shut my eyes and click record, and I Mm -hmm. don't have to think at all. Mm -hmm. But when I do scripts, I have like a little teleprompter app on my computer. Mm. I I play that, and that has been really helpful. And this year, I've been trying to fill more scripts because there's so many amazing writers, and I like to work with them. So I keep a Trello board of all the things I want to record. I highlight which ones are due that week, due because I made an arbitrary deadline, not because they're actually due. And I'll try to record in one sitting three audios that are anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Now, sometimes my neighbors upstairs decide to build an apartment within their apartment at 3 a.m. And in those moments, I'm very fucked because I cannot record. Or the new trend is there's late night literal construction outside my apartment. Mm. That has been... mm. Anyway, (laughs) assuming that everyone shuts the fuck up, I can record for a big chunk of hours, and it's basically nonstop. I start, I record, I get through the audio, I stop it, I save it, I do the next one. And I'm sort of just in a flow. That's the easy part. The hard part is once I'm done going through, cleaning up the entire audio, that means clicks in my voice. So if I have allergies or my mouth is dry, my voice will sound clicky. So I have to correct those, cutting out mistakes that I may have made, or if there's Like, this is my water bottle. Sometimes I talk with my hands. Sometimes I hit it while I'm talking and I don't notice it. (laughs) So then I have to fix it. And that really sucks after. So the editing process, if I have a 25-minute audio, it takes generally at least triple that time to edit. Mm -hmm. From there, if I'm filling a script, it usually comes with a title and tags. But if it's improv, I have to title it, tag it, write the description, all of that. And... I usually don't remember anything I said during an improv. (laughs) So while I edit it, I have to pause it and like write it all down because I'm like, oh, I said that. Oh, this happened. I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. Um, Then from there, drafting up the post. I also commission art for all of my audios. I don't need to do that, but I like torture. So (laughs) I do that for all of my audios. And then I have to schedule the post depending on which platforms they go to. So like one audio can take 10 hours, Mm. (laughs) especially depending on the level of soundscaping. Right. If it's just like I'm giving a blowjob to somebody and we're sitting on a bed, right, that's like very minimal sound editing. Mm -hmm. If I'm wearing a leash and a collar and they're made of metal and I'm crawling on the floor and there's rain, I don't know, like it could be any (laughs) number of things, right? Like yeah. Sometimes when I'm editing, I'm like, did you really need to add that? Like, you really thought that was necessary? And then I get mad at myself, but <laughs> it kind of bangs, so whatever. What kind of supplies do you need to use? I mean, you you mentioned that it's very taxing physically depending on what the sex (laughs) act is that you're depicting, but also that, like, early on you were just, like, slapping your leg with your hand. I mean, like, what what are the – I don't know. Are there, like, special tools that you use? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Not really. Um, One of them is my mouth. Um, that's uh-huh. probably the important tool that I use. People have been like, what do you use to make the blowjob sounds? Like, and it's like, I use a blowjob machine. There is no thing. <laughs> There's nothing that you can find, to my knowledge, that can make a blowjob sound without you actually blowing the job. Mm-hmm. So what, do you put your fingers in your suck mouth? A dildo. Or, okay. Yeah, you suck a dildo. I mean, oh. I don't think there's any other way to make that sound. So, like, if it's a regular blowjob, that's one thing. But if it's deep throating, which I do a lot of, or face fucking, I mean, you got to be physically ready. 
You got to be prepared. (laughs) (laughs) Do you feel like physically exhausted afterwards? Oh my God, yes. People do not realize how physical it is. It's very physical because one of the things to think about is that the sound of it matters more than the effort that you're putting in. But to get the type of sound that would convey that intensity, you have to do Mm -hmm. the action with more intensity than it would generally actually require. Oh, right. Yeah. (laughs) Your face. (laughs) Yeah, I can only imagine. (laughs) But listen, I'm like into it, though. It's a lot of work. No, it's great. It's great. But like, it's... It's a lot. Anyone who just thinks like, oh, this is like some easy job where you're like clicking like post, like, no. God, no. It's exhausting. (laughs) It is. Okay. So going back to finances for a second, Mm -hmm. do you have any debt? So I used to. I have very, so because I'm sick, I have more debt than the average person, right? Um, I'm assuming, I think you live in the US, so you know that the healthcare system is trash. Uh, yes, I have heard. I have heard. <laughs> so if you're sick at all, then like you're kind of fucked. I mean, let, let's see what happens with my career. But um, I am in some debt still, but way less. And I can't stress that enough. So that's like what can you give us a sense of like what how much debt did you have before and how much do you have now? Mm, well, I can say that my surgery last year was $20,000. It was emergency surgery. And I paid it off. Wow. And did you pay it off from this audio erotica work? Yes. Amazing. I know. (laughs) I was like crying, screaming, throwing up happy. Do you have health insurance? Yeah, but like, does it matter? (laughs) Does does it actually pay for? Yeah. They denied my MRI that saved my life last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, really, like, think about that, though. Yeah. The only reason that I could afford to pay out of pocket for the MRI was because of porn. Mm -hmm. And I literally would have died. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. God bless. God bless America. What are your financial goals for yourself? So I need another surgery. Um, My financial goals are probably not going to match what most people's would be, but most people also don't have the health issues that I have. So I'll preface it with that. The type of surgery that I need is not covered by insurance. I will have to pay out of pocket for it, and it will be unbelievably expensive. I will also have to travel for it. Trust me, I've spent more hours researching it than I can ever explain. So, How much do you think it will (sighs) cost? It could be up to $50,000, $60,000 with everything together, right, like all of the different fees. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to go to whatever surgeon I want. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to worry that I'm going to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing Mm -hmm. or who cuts corners or any of that, right? I want to go where I want to go. I want to have autonomy over my health. I have not felt that I've had autonomy over my health for I can't even tell you how long. So the ability to get the treatment that I need to get is worth everything to me. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what I want. That's what I, I literally, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Your financial goals are like to live. Yeah. I would like to live. To have health care. Yeah. I mean, I know that sounds insane, but I think it's important to shed a light on that yeah. when you are sick and you live in a place that doesn't value giving health care to people, your financial goals inevitably yeah. change. Yeah. The reason that I am not like homeless is because I have this business that I've made. After last year's surgery, if I didn't have this, I would have been screwed. So I want to like paint that picture for people because goals are different depending Mm -hmm. on your life circumstances. And for me, I want to live and I want to live without being in tremendous pain all the time. Yeah. Does your audio erotica community know this about you? Yes. Okay. Um, I shared it in March of 2022. I was terrified to tell them. I don't share the specifics of my illness, Mm -hmm. but uh, they know that it causes me extreme pain. I shared it. I was scared that they wouldn't want to jerk off to me anymore. (laughs) But um, no, people are still jerking. (laughs) So God bless. But I'd be lying if I said that I didn't carry any shame around my health status. What do you mean? 
People who have disabilities and who are chronically ill are generally seen as unattractive and as burdensome. And I've done everything in my power to not be seen that way. It's almost like everything I've done, I've done as a big fuck you to my illnesses to be like, no, I can do this, but I can't help feeling embarrassed like I'm broken. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that other people who are sick also feel that because the world makes it abundantly clear that you're annoying. You know, Mm -hmm. that the things that you need are an annoyance. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the relationship between health and sexuality from your perspective? Yes. I think that in general, people who have health issues think that they are not sexy or do not feel sexy. I know that for myself. Even though I know that I am sexy, like I'm paid to be sexy, right? Like it doesn't change the fact that there's this deep feeling of not being hot. I was definitely feeling that when I first started making audios and that's part of why I started. I'd been dealing with a lot of health stuff and I just didn't feel hot. And then everyone was like, no, you are actually. And it was really validating for me, you know. But I think that so much of sexuality is deeper than appearances. And people sort of have these ideas from porn, which is that you have to look a certain way and you have to fuck in this wild position or you have to like, but none of that is actually what sexuality is right? Like those are just ways that it appears. It's ways that it is manifested. But in reality, sexuality is about a deep connection with yourself and another person. Sometimes not everybody wants to be with another person. And that's also fine. When you add into the equation, being disabled, especially with something like chronic pain, where in my case, there's days I've woken up and I literally can't walk at all. Do I feel sexy? No, but I know that I still am. I know that my sexuality is not something that can be taken from me because ultimately your sexuality is in your mind. Like your body is part of it, but people listen to the work that I do because it stimulates their brain and that's the biggest sex organ. So ultimately, I think if we can get more people who are sexy, hot, (laughs) disabled creators out there We can help remove some of that stigma and that internalized feeling of, I can't be hot because of this thing. Because Mm -hmm. you can be hot. And you are hot. If you're listening and you're disabled, you're fucking hot. For people who haven't heard your audio, can you give me like one sentence of you being young Princess L to me? (laughs) If you're comfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can. Okay. Hold on. I'm so happy that you invited me on this podcast. You're really so fucking pretty. (laughs) You have no idea what I would do to you if I could get you alone. (laughs) Are you okay? Amazing. (laughs) Okay, that was amazing. Thank you. I feel so honored. (laughs) Yum Princess L, thank you so much for being on Other People's Pockets. Thank you for having me. It was such a joy to talk to you, Maya. Thanks for listening to Other People's Pockets. And hey, if you like this show, please tell a friend and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Other People's Pockets is written and hosted by me, Maya Lau. It's produced by me along with Joy Sanford and Dan Gallucci production help from Angela Vang. Our executive producers are me, along with Jane Marie and Dan Gallucci. A special thanks to Protection for Sex Workers. Other People's Pockets is a co-production of Pushkin Industries and Little Everywhere. To find more Pushkin podcasts, listen on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you love this show, consider subscribing to Pushkin Plus, 
offering bonus content and ad-free listening across our network for $4.99 a month. Look for the Pushkin Plus channel on Apple Podcasts or at pushkin.fm. And you can sign up for Pushkin newsletters at pushkin.fm. Find me on Twitter at Maya Lau or on Instagram and TikTok at It's Maya Money. And one more thing, we would love to hear from you. Tell us what is currently frustrating you about your personal finances. And not just something general like you wish you made more money, but something really specific. Leave us a voicemail at 323-540-4255. That's 323-540-4255. Or record a voice memo and send it to otherpeoplespockets at gmail.com. 